my friends are tired of hearing how much I miss Hi everyone. I kind of feel Hello. So Hi everyone. Hope everyone is doing great and thanks for joining us for today's session on ecosystem overview block 71 gateway as part of the peer 71 explore series. My name is Kao Ming and together with Ning we are from the Peer 71 program team and we will be your hosts for the session today. So some background about Peer 71 for those who might be hearing about us for the very first time. So Peer 71 is a joint collaboration between Marine Time and Port Authority of Singapore and NUS Enterprise to establish a vibrant marine time ecosystem in Singapore. We run programs that are designed to provide access to markets resources, investors, and many more. One such initiative is our annual Signature Smart Port Challenge, or SPC in short. This year, we have shortlisted 20 SPC finalists who will go through a seven week long mentor guided market validation and customer discovery journey under the Peer 71 Accelerate program. In fact, this program is ongoing right now and the Peer 71 Explore series is one of the many events that have been installed for them. And many of our finalists are also here with us today in the audience. So towards the end um, of the program, SPC finalists um, stand a chance to actually secure cash prizes of up to 10K, uh, grant applications of up to 50K, as well as continued uh, entrepreneurial and technical support um, beyond SPCs, such as through the Peer 71 Lending Pack program that offers co working spaces and access to network at Block 71. Um, so, now that we have some idea about Peer 71 and SPC, uh, let's welcome our speakers. So, together with us today, we have Sazali, who is the Deputy Director at NUS Enterprise, and he's overseeing the Block 71 program in Southeast Asia. Sazali will also be sharing more about the Global Startup Runway program and how our Peer 71 startups can benefit from this program to venture beyond Singapore. We are also thrilled to have two of our very own SPC 2018 alumni, Stephen and Pamela who will be joining us for a discussion to actually share about their experiences and journeys. So uh, Stephen is the COO and Managing Director of Skylab Services, which specializes in end-to-end -end capabilities of optimizing the delivery of content, software and machine data, as well as the implementation of mission-critical IoT and 5G ready-edge computing solutions across multiple domains, including marine time. Skylab Services also has presence in the Indonesian market as well. Pamela, who is the co-founder and director of Envision, an AI data intelligence and geospatial startup that offers an end-to-end -end automated solution suite to address various um, challenges in the maritime ship supply chain um, sector, you know, from ship supplies order processing to port delivery logistics. So during the discussion, Stephen and Pamela will also be sharing about, you know, how they've benefited from the support of both Peer 71 and Block 71 um, to expand um, their startups beyond uh, Singapore. And after which we'll then proceed on with uh, Q&A where we will be answering all your questions. So throughout the session, uh, feel free to submit your questions or comment using the Q&A function at the bottom of the screen and we'll answer them uh, during Q&A. So um, without further ado, over to you, Sazali. Uh, thank you, Kamin. Uh, thank you uh, for introducing me. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, happy to be here to share more about Block 71 and also maybe going to specific about uh, what Kamin mentioned about the global startup runway. Uh, yeah. uh, you all can see my slides. Yeah, good. So I'm talking here today to talk specifically about uh, Block 71 Southeast Asia. As uh, Kamin mentioned, I'm taking care of this uh, uh, region, which at this point uh, includes uh, Indonesia as well as uh, Vietnam. Uh, maybe backtrack a bit, uh, Block 71 has about 10 locations globally. Uh, of course, uh, started in Singapore, uh, and then we have uh, uh, locations in Southeast Asia, Indonesia and Vietnam, uh, in China, and of course, uh, in the US. So what is Box 71 is actually an initiative by NUS Enterprise. 
I am from NES Enterprise, and usually do this initiative in collaboration with uh, uh, pa partners who are either established corporates or government agencies uh, globally. So what we do, we do two main things. We are tech ecosystem builder. Uh, we, we build ecosystem of startup and, and, and the support of startups needs like investors, corporates, uh, talent, and so on. Uh, but we also are global connector. So we help startups get connected uh, to to demand drivers, to, to talent, uh, to IP, not just within Singapore, but uh, globally as well. As well. Right. So part of the Block 71 Indonesia. So Block 71 Indonesia, we are partnering with uh, Salim Group, one of the biggest uh, conglomerates in uh, Indonesia. Uh, we started Block 71 Indonesia in about 2017. Uh, we are uh, through, uh, together with Salim, which is actually through the department called Innovation Factory, uh, which is focused on uh, driving digital innovation among the Salim group, right? Uh, so obviously it's a very strategic and complementary partnership. Uh, NUS Enterprise bring our expertise in building ecosystem. Uh, Salim group through Innovation Factory will bring uh, all the businesses within their group and also beyond the network in Indonesia, right? So in Indonesia, we, are, we have three locations uh, in across Indonesia. Uh, interestingly, all on the island of Java, which you see in front of you. There are 17,000 islands in Indonesia, but Java has more, about 60% of the population is at this point, about 270 million people. Uh, so we are located in Jakarta, which is the, the capital itself, uh, in Bandung, which is the capital of the province of West Java, and also in Jogja, which is uh, has a as a, a craton or a castle, one of the rare few in Indonesia, right? So why Jakarta? Why we are in Jakarta is for obvious reason. Jakarta is the capital, uh, and also there's a lot of uh, uh, thriving startup ecosystem over there. Most of the unicorns of Indonesia uh, have a presence in Jakarta itself, right? And then in Bandung, uh, Bandung, like I say, is the capital of West Java. So it's like a gateway for, for our startups to, to the rest of West Java. Uh, Bandung is also a city with about 28 uh, institutes of higher learning, right? Which is very uh, strategic for, for people like us from NUS Enterprise, but also to the startups, uh, which will provide access to the talent from, from, from these universities and also to the startup that arises out of these universities. Uh, uh, Jogja, why Jogja? Jogja is another uh, strong city of students. There's uh, quite a number of universities there. I think last count is about 300,000 plus uh, population of uh, students. Uh, so again, we have access to the talent, uh, the startups from the universities, uh, but also the, 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 the large hinterland beyond Jogja, uh, which are very interesting for startups, especially in the agri-tech space. So these are some examples of startups that Block 71 have supported in Indonesia. I think today, since the beginning of uh, Block 71 of Indonesia, we have uh, supported close to 270 startups. Uh, this year alone, we are already supporting about 90 startups, uh, ranging from the various sectors, as you see on the screen uh, in front of you. Right? Uh, not all of them are from Indonesia, majority are, but quite a number are from outside Indonesia. Uh, like Singapore, even have startups uh, from Hong Kong, Australia, and so on, right? Uh, that wants to penetrate uh, or to explore the Indonesian market through our Box 71 network. Next is uh, Vietnam. So this is a new addition. Uh, it's Box 71 Saigon uh, out of Ho Chi Minh City. Uh, we partner with uh, Baker Max. And in fact, we just opened it about, yeah, almost exactly one year ago now, during COVID time, actually. So our partner in, in Vietnam is Bakermax. Uh, Bakermax uh, is the leading industrial park and township developer. Uh, they're quite well known for being the partner, partnering with SAMCOP from Singapore to form the Vietnam Singapore Industrial Park. Uh, today, there's about nine uh, Vietnam Singapore Industrial Park across the country. Uh, but in addition to that, Bakermax also manage other uh, industrial parks in, in Vietnam. So, so with this partnership, uh, we hope that our the startups in our system have access uh, to the Vietnam market by way of Bakermax and subsidiaries, and also to the various tenants, uh, interesting tenants that Bakermax has in all the industrial parks. 
So this is uh, yeah, this is now uh, now this is a very rare photo. This was our official opening last year. Uh, we opened uh, Box 71 Saigon last year. Uh, last year, uh, COVID haven't really hit Vietnam, or actually yes, hit, but they managed it very well. Uh, they were, uh, so we could actually have a kind of uh, uh, in-location in uh, kind of opening. Actually, myself, I have to do it virtually. Uh, fun fact, I have not seen the Box 71 Saigon location physically with my own eyes. <laughs> so looking forward to one day that I can visit there. So we started uh, last year, as I mentioned, uh, to date, we have uh, supported about 19 startups. Uh, these are some examples of startups in the various sector. Uh, most of them are from Vietnam, but also quite a number actually uh, from Singapore, right? So that gives you a good overview of uh, Block 71 in uh, Southeast Asia. Uh, but of course, there are also other locations, but I think this afternoon we're just looking at Southeast Asia. So, so what do you need to do? What, how do you engage us, you, uh, the startups out there that want to tackle the Southeast Asian markets, right? So this program, if you call a uh, global startup runway, uh, something we just launched this year. Uh, it's actually a, a very structured one year program, which helps startups who have uh, ambition to expand in Southeast Asia. Uh, and then we guide them to grow to this one year goal-based growth plan for the startup, right? It starts with, uh, a booster program. Uh, this is where we, we have an induction program for all the startups. Uh, and because of COVID, we actually do it virtually and we do it across uh, three regions. In fact, the current cohort is ongoing right now. So we have startups from Indonesia, startups from Vietnam, even startups from Singapore attending the booster program. So what is a booster program? It's a six weeks program where you know you will be it's like a kick, uh, kick off the, the whole one year but you can start off with this six weeks induction program where over the six weeks there will be workshops mentoring sessions uh, pulse checks with box 71 team uh, founder circle sessions covering topics like unit economic funding scaling product development right and during these six weeks not just us we will receive a lot of uh, guidance and from mentor from our network of industry mentors, our experienced entrepreneurs, and opportunity to teach to businesses and uh, investors, right? Uh, so the whole idea at the end of the six weeks, you're all set for the global startup runway, right? So what is the global startup runway? I said, uh, we work together with the startup founders uh, like you out there uh, to, to achieve your goal within that one year. So we believe these are the three main categories of goals that most startups out there will look out for. They want to acquire business deals, right? So we will do warm connections uh, to Tech Showcase Day, where we will invite corporates uh, and the startup in a very uh, focused, accelerated market introduction, where the startups can pitch to, to, to the curated uh, corporate uh, attendees. So the whole idea is foster closer interaction, right? In fact, uh, Stephen here from Skylab and Pamela and Vision were past participants of Tech Showcase Day when it was still done uh, physically, but now we've moved it all to virtual, right? And we also uh, many of our peers and our startups also participated in a Tech Showcase Day. Sorry? Many of our peers and our startups also participated. Correct, exactly. Yeah. So in addition to the two you see uh, on this panel today, there are others who have participated before and happy to support uh, more from Peer 71 in the future. Right. Uh, second, uh, startups need to secure grants and funding. So we will do the in, uh, introduction to, to VCs through our events like uh, Meet the VCs. Right? And of course, we will guide you in terms of how you do the pitching and so on. Uh, last but not least, uh, there's a lot. Uh, as a startup, you would have access to the various IP and research, not only from NUS, uh, but also from our partner universities. Like most universities, NUS has a lot of research and technology, which we want to, you know, uh, license out to startups out there who see value in it and make their solution more defensible. But of course, uh, along the whole year, you will access to our workspace, uh, to all our locations, uh, either physically, but now we also have a concept of virtual startup pass, where you can still be part of the community, but you don't have to be located there physically. Uh, you have access to the talent, uh, either from NUS, uh, like our NOC program, where very entrepreneurship inclined interns uh, give the opportunity for these interns to work in your startup as well. And last but not least, access to our community, right? 
Uh, just some, some facts and figures. I think Block 71 this year uh, is our 10 year anniversary. And to date, we have about 1,600 distinct startups that we have built up over our network, right? So, so this is what we do. Remember I say Global Business Connector. Uh, we focus on startups who are broadly in these four areas, uh, tech-related startups. Uh, so we try to match uh, the startups with the various uh, demand drivers out there, corporates, uh, government agencies, and so on. And, and how do you get the startups? We work with, uh, of course, NUS, our partner universities across the region, uh, also incubators and accelerators like uh, PS71. So if you're interested, uh, the cohort three will start next year. So we do usually do two runs uh, every year. So it starts in March uh, 2022. Uh, so if you fall in, into any one of these category, uh, just contact uh, me or the team. Uh, we, we can discuss with them. Right? Maybe here. Uh, yeah, these are some of the contact points. All right. Thank you very much. Back to you, Kami. Thank All you so right. much, Sazali. Uh, we have a question. Sorry, Kang. I'm just going to jump right in because since sure. we were on the topic of Block 71 locations, I know mm -hmm. today's event is largely on Southeast Asia, but Block 71 uh, programs are also established in other countries. Uh, there's one question whether or not we are expanding to East Asia like Japan and Korea. I guess we're yeah. only in Japan. Uh, yeah, we, we, are, we are working closely with our partner in, in Japan uh, to set up Block 71. Uh, in Japan, uh, of course, things a bit slow down because of COVID. Uh, but we do have programs uh, which we organize together with our partner for Block Seventy One. Actually, it's out of uh, Nagoya, so do watch out for that. If you have interested for the Japanese market, you can always reach out to the team. Yeah, and, and along that line, we're also in several other places in China, uh, in San Francisco as well. Yeah, so in just, China, just we we have uh, Block Seventy One locations in Suzhou. That's where we started, uh, and then we are uh, so now in Chongqing and soon uh, Guangzhou. And, uh, and in the US, we have uh, our location in San Francisco. Thank you. Yeah, all right. Sorry, I was on mute. Yeah, thanks, Azali, for the very informative sharing. Okay, so um, me back to you, Ning. So, uh, we can actually uh, start. Uh, our discussion, you know, on um, Pamela's and Stephen's uh, entrepreneurial journeys, you know, as they, um, you know, went through the PS seventy one accelerate program, and even uh, with the support from Block seventy one, PS seventy one, you know, um, Stephen also managed to expand uh, Skylab to the Indonesia. Yeah, so over to you, Nick. Uh, thank you so much. So I'll just give a little bit of context. Uh, Envision and Skylab were both from the 2018 uh, Pier 71 Smart for Challenge run. And upon completion, uh, they, of course, uh, tried to expand their businesses to other regions. And in particular, Skylab um, set foot in Indonesia. So that's why he's going to share about his journey here today. Envision was also exploring Indonesia. Uh, so they also participated in Tech Showcase. That was rather exploratory for them, right? And Pamela here is going to share with you uh, their, their experiences. But I'm going to let them introduce themselves first. Uh, shall we let Pamela go first? Um. Sorry, Pamela, I think you just turned on uh, the mute button. Yes. Um. Thank you, Ning, and thank you, um, everyone. Uh, my name is Pamela. Uh, I'm from um, Ambition. Ambition is actually a data technology company, and we aim to really help organization to optimize resources and uh, using AI data technology and uh, geospatial technology. Uh, Ambition was one of the finalists in 2018 Smart Code Challenge, and we established in December 2018. So, in fact, uh, Envision is a baby born out of the Smart Port Challenge. So, prior to that, we, we are not really familiar with maritime business. And, you know, maritime to us is kind of a, a quite a close industry. But through the Smart Port Challenge, through the uh, boot camp training, where um, the PSMD one actually 
bring in together corporate, which is a maritime player, and also start up together so that we gain a knowledge of maritime. So we also realize that uh, maritime challenge is not just offshore, it's not just in the ocean, but it's also on the land where uh, ship suppliers, when they deliver the goods, the uh, provision to the vessel, they need to go to the port. So there's a lot of challenges. So that's actually in line with what we are, we were currently doing at that time is uh, supply chain logistic. So that's, that's the reason we get, came into uh, maritime because of PSMB1. And we are born out of uh, uh, smartphone challenge. And through this journey that when we came into uh, PSMB1, it really helps us to understand the maritime business and also give us a network to connect to the problem owner. That means the, the corporate, the company who are in the maritime who has challenges and they share with us their problem. And we think whether our technology can really help them. So for the maritime, we, you know, we, Realize that we can help ship suppliers and the uh, uh, chandeliers and uh, probably the, the free forwarder when they have documents that cannot process. Our solution, our data technology really helps them to automatically extract and standardize and differentiate different type of uh, contents of the documents and being in the free, for, free text format, being Excel, being PDF, so we automatically extract standardized and process it. And that really helps for a uh, company like ship suppliers where they need to do a lot of requests for quotation. For the free company, they need to process a lot of unstandardized documents uh, for the, the build of lading and the uh, freight uh, notice. And it really reduces the labor intensive uh, work. So that helps them to really help for the, the, the labor crunch market as what is now. And also we, the other solution we have is data central platform, which connect different, uh, different silo systems. So we help the, the data to be uh, connected, to be transferred, to have a handshake between different type of enterprise system, being order entry, being a uh, WMS, being a TMS. The other aspect is really a logistic delivery. Port delivery can be very tricky, very challenging. The type of truck you use, whether it's a cold chain, whether it's an open truck, whether it's a hala truck, uh, the size of the truck. So all these uh, creates problem. Furthermore, the, the very narrow uh, delivery window, the fulfillment window, and um, uh, the transport to the port and the port congestion. So vessel arrival schedule changed. All these are creating, creating a lot of complexity. So we help the logistic company to optimize delivery resources and to push the alert of a vessel schedule changes to the driver. And then the driver can actually avoid idle waiting time at the port. And that really reduce the delivery costs and also reduce the, the traffic jam in the port area. So basically, Ambition use our data technology to, to integrate and integrate end-to-end -end solution for a ship suppliers for a logistic delivery and so on. Thank you so and, much, Pamela. And I'm sure you're also working with uh, uh, SAS right now, right? So that's the Singapore Ship Chandling uh, Association. Yes. Association of Ship Suppliers. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that really, uh, and also that for this coming, uh, this 2021 challenge, SARS participated as one of the problem owner. So yeah. they bring together the whole community. So that's what I see PSMD1 is really a platform uh, connecting the maritime corporate, the, the problem owner with the startup. Because we start up when we knock on the door, it's very difficult because they, don't, they do not recognize us. And with this platform, uh, this kind of curated uh, problem and curated challenges and also bring in the startup to see where their technology can actually address that problem. So that's what yeah. I think is, is very valuable. Yeah, so that's what we're trying to do right now. And, and just for information that the panelists might not know, all, most of the participants here today, I would say maybe 90% of them are actually um, the, in the current cohort. So they're currently doing the validation and all that. But 
Pamela and Stefan, uh, they have already gone past the validation part. So they completed the PSL program and then they find opportunities in other markets that they wanted to expand into. And so beyond PL71, uh, we well, Block 71 is also one of NUS Enterprises uh, programs, right? So that's how we link everybody up and help uh, our startups to venture outside of Singapore when they have already established their base in, in Singapore. So um, I know Pamela's uh, joined a couple of the uh, tech showcase day in Indonesia back when COVID didn't hit and it was done in person. Um, back then you were also looking at the logistics sector, right? Yes. How, how did you find it? Actually, I found that, that we, we take part in the 2019 tech showcase mm -hmm. and it's a very well curated program where uh, Block 71, Peer 71 organized with the support of IMDA and the ESG, Enterprise Singapore. So the, the program really bring the startup before going there, they have actually shortlisted and filtered uh, the corporate uh, being in because they understand that our, uh, you know, our solution is really addressing the uh, supply chain logistic and the uh, uh, maritime. So they actually curated the list of the uh, supply, uh, supply chain logistic company. So bring them over for the, to visit the tech show. So it's very curated and very in, intense and very packed program for us to give a pitch, short pitch, and also to have a table, to break up table, to meet with the corporate itself. So it's to understand their, their problem. I, I found it's very useful. Yeah, that's definitely useful because you were exploring a new market, right? So without putting in too much commitment yet, uh, you were there to explore uh, what the responses from the corporates like, what the market size is like, what, what, what basically what it's like in a new environment. Like. So that's a tech showcase day for you, which uh, Block 71 organizes mm -hmm. uh, in conjunction with uh, IMDA. Yes. So I know, Stefan, you also went and then, but uh, out of that program, uh, uh, something happened or rather, uh, you know, you, you reach another milestone. So I'll leave it to you to share with us uh, what happened. Well, thank you very much, Ning, and uh, a very good afternoon to all of you and to all the finalists out there. Congratulations. Uh, you are... I'm sure in the midst of a very exciting journey, uh, all of us have gone through that and uh, it will get even more exciting as you go along. Uh, Pier 71 has a very special place in my heart. Uh, it's amazing that it has been almost, my well, goodness, three years, coming to four years. And so many things has happened. And in fact, I was doing a bit of walking down memory lane uh, earlier on and as, as I was looking through some of the things that we did. So what I'll do is uh, very quickly, I'll show some quick slides. Uh, there are more pictures and less words. And this, as I go along, I will share with all of us here our journey very quickly, uh, how Pier 71 was really instrumental in getting us started in the marine time industry and how we even managed to pivot into very exciting opportunities and uh, you know, strategic relationships with some of the big tech players out there. So, so this is uh, something that's very exciting. And, uh, and I'm gonna show it to, I'm not sure if you can see my slides here. So at Skylab, what we call ourselves a digital performance company. We are a deep tech company. We develop technology that is used for what is known as data logistics. Uh, essentially collecting data from all kinds of sources and then accelerating them and sending them somewhere else. And we are in the green energy we are in smart built environment, we are in the telco space, and thanks to Pier 71, we pivoted into the marine time world. We knew nothing about the marine time world where we started. And at the end of the seven weeks, we were kind of pseudo, I wouldn't even call expert, but enough to hold a conversation amongst all the veterans without uh, looking quite silly. And at the end of that journey, it was very exciting. Uh, we were up against the very best, we were told. Right. Of the 20, we are up against the very best and uh, we managed to uh, you know, uh, secure, uh, perhaps we say something that was meaningful and uh, we, we pivoted our technology and I suppose the reason why they thought we had something to contribute is because uh, at that point, one of my pitch, I remember I was saying that you know, everybody talks about data being important, but nobody talks about how to get the data off the ships into wherever you need to process it. So, so that was my pitch. And I suppose uh, that struck a chord with the judges and, and that's where we were. And as a consequence of that, again, thanks to Pier 71, we had a lot of publicity. This is just some examples. Uh, we were featured quite regularly across all kinds of uh, uh, you know, 
publications, we were invited to events and so on and so forth. We got a lot of publicity, uh, again, thanks to uh, Peer 71. And of course, uh, our friends are all here today, Sazali, Ning, uh, and Priscilla. And we are talking about launching in Indonesia. We did. Uh, Sparkbot Challenge, I believe, was in November 2018. So along the way, we did quite a few things. We got ourselves ready. And thanks to Zazali, uh, we were able to actually launch a company or we set up a company in Indonesia in uh, July 17, less than a year after. It was very exciting. And uh, we were younger then. Uh, as you can tell, we were younger then. Yeah. Uh, Sazali, you look exactly the same. Yeah, you look exactly the same. You look exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And you can see the laughter in the audience. And this is uh, Block 71 in Jakarta. So I suppose all of us miss this place. I haven't been back there since forever. Right behind me. Yeah. <laughs> and this is also the place where the tech showcase actually happened. Very exciting. And again, thanks to Sazali and the team, we managed to meet a lot of very interesting partners, ecosystem uh, collaborators. So now, uh, very quickly, I'm going to show you a quick three minutes clip. And this shows you the journey we have taken ever since then, how we managed to commercialize the technology that we kind of developed with uh, PS71, uh, through our time in PS71, and how we have taken it global. All right. So I'm, I'm just going to show, and we can have a discussion after this about this. Digital transformation is here to stay, and we at Skylab take pride at how our seamless data logistics services help enable smart data-driven decisions in the intelligent era. Skylab became aware of the communication challenges the maritime industry faces as it adopts IoT on a large scale. In response, we developed smart maritime solutions, which is powered by our Skylab Transport Accelerator technology. Smart Maritime is an integrated communication platform that helps our maritime industry overcome high barriers of entry to their digital transformation journey. To bring our Smart Maritime solutions to market, we needed a powerful and trusted technology partner to succeed. And Intel technology offers excellent value for money and lightweight processing at the edge. At Intel, we strongly believe that partnerships are how great technologies get enabled. And this proves true in Intel's relationship with Skylab. Together, we architected Skylab Maritime Solutions and Skylab Transport Accelerator to enable sea-based operations to adapt to dynamic connectivity conditions at sea with utmost efficiency. In sharing our passion to deliver winning results to end customer, Intel is happy and proud to partner and enable Skylab to provide a platform to scale across the world. With Intel, Skylab proactively partners with clients in identifying business pain points and crafting a solution that adds high value to their operations. An excellent example of this is our collaboration with IO3. Many ship owners today are unaware of how to approach digitalization. Some fail to see value on their ship business operations. So to enable smart shipping systems, IO3 adopted an educational and solution-led approach. Skylab's expertise in smart maritime solutions, combined with our maritime experience, has led to the development and support of IO3's proprietary maritime-centric digital solution called Chavis. Jarvis is 100% embedded with SDA technologies. It delivers IoT with built-in cybersecurity. Jarvis is a shipboard integrated communications platform. We specially design it to manage connectivity through various satellite networks. Jarvis is engineered to support enhanced integrated solutions, asset optimization, and delivery of secure critical applications. With Jarvis, our customers are able to manage their businesses predictably and in a secure manner. Jarvis also enables ship crews today to connect with their families. They can now go online and video call their loved ones. This is critical in times like this, when they have to stay away from home for extended periods. IO3 is young by industry standards, but with Skylab, we can now deliver smart shipping solutions throughout Asia and even beyond. With Intel as our partner, Skylab is confident that smart maritime solutions will continue to contribute to building our digital maritime capability and enhance the welfare of seafaring crew 
not only in Singapore, but around the world. Thank you so much, Stephen. Thank you very much. Yeah, so that's our journey. Uh, happy to take questions on it. Yeah. Now, what speaks volume about your presentation is partnership. And I believe it's really partnerships that bring uh, you know, people far and, and, and wide. So we have a lot of questions coming from uh, the audience, actually. Uh, a few of them are uh, probably directed at all three of you. So I will start with some of the easy ones, OK? Um, I would say, perhaps what asks uh, Zali, what kind of uh, support does the team provide uh, startups looking to expand to these locations that Box 71 uh, is at? If you could like quickly cover it, I know there's a lot of support on the ground. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So first thing you do, just apply for, uh, <laughs> from our website, uh, box71.co, choose the location that you want. Uh, uh, just provide your details, what you're looking for, and our team will get in touch with you. Uh, but, but briefly, I think uh, there's many ways to enter into market, right? Uh, like what uh, Pamela and Stephen has done is to, to try to explore the market for customers, right? Uh, so, so you can join us uh, once you're a community member, join us to, uh, using one of these uh, tech showcase day, uh, especially if it's uh, on a team that's uh, uh, something which is uh, suitable for your solution. Uh, where you get opportunity to meet up with the uh, corporates, right? So you also sign up for the booster program. You will go through this program, like I mentioned earlier, six weeks where you have a lot of opportunities to meet corporates and other people and so on, right? Uh, so so far, that's been the, the, the mode that most of the startups that we talk to, uh, they want to expand to the market. Uh, once, once you get further into that stage, if you want to set up a team in operations, uh, we can connect you uh, with our partners in our network how to set up or incorporate your, your company in the overseas location, how do you hire people, and so on and so forth. Right? So there's various ways uh, from, from selling to the market over there, as well as uh, setting up your operations over there. I guess that also comes together with like, uh, if, if they need help with translation and, and things like that, those are peripheral services that we can also uh, find out for them. Uh. Yeah, so again, uh, specific to translation, uh, so far we're not, but I think most, most of the places that we go to, English will be okay. Uh, but if you need specific uh, local language, uh, we can connect you with some of the people who provide those translation services. Okay, uh, there's one interesting question. Uh, so someone asked if uh, startups need to give anything in return for being part of Block 71, for example, equity. Maybe I'll get uh, Pamela and, uh, and Stephen to answer this question. Did you guys have to give back anything or not? Oh uh, no! I think we all we all uh, peer seventy one a great debt of gratitude. Uh, we don't have to. Uh, in fact, uh, we we got more from them. And in fact, subsequent to uh, the smartboard challenge, we also got a grant from MPA. So actually, we get a lot. We got a lot out of the ecosystem, and that's why we are always keen to help our next our alumni or our the, the current batch to to see how best we can help them. Yeah. Uh, not only that, you get a lot of free support. You get free coffee too. <laughs> yes, but Ning doesn't uh, make good coffee. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, I think our experience, although that we have not, uh, because of COVID and our expansion plan to Indonesia also delayed, uh, but we we did set up our development center in in Jakarta, and I found the block seventy one actually create set an environment that you can actually meet when you need to go. Uh, I mean, if you are setting up or I mean, if you're looking to expansion to Indonesia you must have a local presence because otherwise you will not know the market, you will not be committed to the, to the, to the, to the customer and so they will not see your commitment. But I found that Block 71 is actually a very good landing pad so that you can make use of the place to meet the potential customer to start setting up the office and you can also use that place to, uh, you know, to kind of do some, bring your, you, for, for us, when we started the development center is small, so we bring them to Block 71 so that they have some identity, they have the connection back to Singapore until they grow bigger so that we, you know, our, our, our center is there. But it is a really, a, you know, you get excellent support, you get network, you get communicating with the local people because they are in Block 71. So they exchange a lot of ideas and that's where the network and your customer base are. 
And uh, thank you, Sazali, uh, and thank you for uh, the Block 21 in Jakarta. Looking forward to go with you for Vietnam Seigong. <laughs> thank you so much. So uh, in short, we don't take equity. Um, of course, I always say that we do have an ask. La. We hope that you contribute back to the community. Um, so you either, you know, uh, help out the other peers, uh, you know, meaningful contributions in, in many ways. La. So that's, that's usually the ask that uh, we put up front. Yeah, definitely. Uh, just to jump in very quickly on that name. So uh, to, to all fellow participants, feel free to reach out. We are always available. If you need to reach us, uh, you can get through Ning or Cesarli. Uh, we have gone down the journey that you have gone down, or we are about to go through. So happy to uh, give you our two cents worth to, to mm -hmm. help you along. Yeah, Reach out to us anytime. Thank you so much for uh, offering. Uh, so that means he's going to be there for the alumni uh, networking session. <laughs> Uh, anyway, I just wanted to also put it down that uh, this is not an advertisement session. I didn't, I didn't pay them to speak so highly about uh, anything that we do. <laughs> just in case someone's wondering. No, no, this is from the bottom of our heart. Okay, so just for the record, <laughs> since you are being recorded, uh, I, I, in fact, from the video you saw, a lot of those things, uh, you know, Pierce 71 played a very instrumental part for us to even go into the marine time industry. Uh, as you could see, we were not from the industry, but thanks to the incubator, thanks to the SmartPod Challenge, thanks to the grant, we were able to pivot. And on top of that, Zazali through the uh, Block 71 Indonesia also helped us expand it. And just, just to share with you uh, a little bit more, we actually pivoted away from Marine Time One. Once we got into Indonesia, we had opportunities using the same technology for other purposes as well. So it's very exciting uh, in that sense. Yeah, uh, that's what we believe in uh, for Pierce and One. That's why there's a reimagined in Pierce and One's name, right? So we always believe that if you have a technology, it can be reimagined in other industries. Uh, you, it, sometimes you can apply it in maritime. So hence, you find your maybe new blue ocean or something like that. So um, Envision and Skylabs were not originally from maritime. But there's one question I do want to ask. Uh, were there particularly memorable challenges when you... Uh, for doing your expansion activities uh, that you would advise, uh, you know, this new cohort, you know, they should probably avoid, or is it unavoidable? Yeah, happy, happy to share on that. Uh, in fact, I, I had my fair share of hitting my head against the wall and it hurts. Uh, trust me, it does. Uh, but it's okay. You, whatever don't kill you makes you stronger. So that, that's point number one. Point number two, I think we have to be cognizant of two dimensions. The first dimension is domain, and the other dimension is technology. Don't mix the two up, right? Uh, Skylab had technology, but we did not have the domain in marine time. And then when you speak to, you know, veterans in the industry, it's very important to be able to articulate and communicate based on the pain points they understand. Don't keep talking about tech, because tech on its own is a, is a means to an end. It's not an end on its own. So it's very important. So whatever tech we're trying to push, it has always have to be premised on the pain points you're trying to solve. So in our case, it was quite clear the pain point was satellite comms, you know, data not flowing as quickly as we like it to. And then it's how do we apply the technology for that purpose? So if we are not already from the industry, I think it's very important in the seven weeks that you have. And in fact, that's how we make the best of it, by the way. You know, we spoke to a lot of, industry expert from the marine time industry. I went from zero, not necessarily to hero, but zero to maybe one in that seven weeks. So that at the end of that uh, process during the smartboard challenge, I could at least hold a meaningful conversation with, with uh, the practitioners in the industry. And I think that helped a lot. And again, thanks to Tier 71 for making that happen. Thank you so much. Uh, yes, I wanted to add this. Um, I think I fully agree with Stephen and um, we are actually going through the same journey and we as a startup or as a tech player, we're enabler. We are not the core, we're not the core business. You know what, we enable their business and helping them. So uh, we are very green for getting into the smartphone challenge, but then through the journey, through the training, uh, where uh, personally one actually invite corporate from Maritime to teach us and to share with us the problem, share with us the operation. From the operation, we understand the need. So that's very useful. And I, I find that the, uh, you, all the cohorts uh, try to leverage on this. Don't miss your training, okay? The training is very important. It's very intense, but it's very meaningful. Through that, you, you can 
from zero to if not 100, but you can at least get 80 to be able to make a conversation that is meaningful with the corporate. Otherwise, they will not listen to you. Maritime is quite a close business, I mean, close industry. You need to understand their lingo to be able to communicate. And also using that, it's not just close for us. You know, we have the supply chain. So it's hard to integrate them together. So don't forget that this is not the end. From starting from the maritime, it actually brought you to the other avenue and expanding from here onwards. That's what we expand. Thank you so much. Now that is part one, okay, that, that the corporate party has to do, which is to go through this and accelerate. I'm talking about part two right now, and I'm gonna target that that uh Sazani, you know, in the event where they are looking, uh, you know, they're mature enough looking to do uh global expansion. So You've, and you've probably seen uh, teams expanding from Singapore to other parts of, of uh, the world and, and vice versa, right? So how do you think these companies should prepare themselves uh, for this kind of expansion activities and journey? Thanks, thanks for that. I think uh, maybe just to add on to what Stephen said, I think, we should, I think most of you all will know about it, right? The technology and domain, of course, knowing your customer, right? Uh, you need to know the customer that you're talking to. Uh, but actually about going overseas, uh, the, the, the other thing uh, that I think from uh, most startups uh, have challenges, of course some go through it, is uh, the, the, cultural, the cultural difference. The cultural difference, right? Uh, not in the way, not only just in the interactions, uh, but also uh, the, the scale of the way that the business is done, right? Uh, so many a times uh, we always advise our startups, uh, just be open that maybe you might have to change a bit of your business model, right? Uh, in fact, some of uh, our mentoring sessions, we quickly ask the startup to, you know, when, when you talk to mentor, uh, validate your model again. For example, what might work and do very well in where you're doing, where your home country is right now, you might need to change a bit, right? Uh, could be the way you engage customer instead of direct doing with partners, uh, could be the way you cover the customer and so on and so forth. Uh, because, I think some of those who know me well will know that uh, Singapore is a bit is anomaly in this part of the world, uh, whereas our neighboring countries are slightly different, the way they do business, uh, the speed they do business, and so on and so forth. Uh, so you must be very aware about how it is done. Uh, of course, uh, we, we uh, with our local team, we will try to advise you as much as possible. Uh, we will try to give you the warm introduction, uh, but again, uh, must be very open. Of course, eventually it will help if you have somebody local we spearhead your activities over there, right? Uh, so, so that would be, seems to be some of the part where people might struggle a bit. And I've seen some of those who have uh, successfully uh, pivot, for example, like Stephen here, and I saw he knows, I know that he has also a local team to engage the local customer, right? Yeah. Yeah, there's the cultural nuances, lah. Correct. Yeah, and then that's very unique to every single location. Yeah. Correct. Thank you so much, Sazali. Uh, I'm going to ask uh, maybe Pamela, what's next for Envision after this? Well, we're waiting for the pandemic to be over so that <laughs> we can quickly travel to Jakarta. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, uh, I, I think for us, uh, the development is not stopping from here. I, even with the Personally, one we are graduates, but then we are we still undergraduate because we are still a lot to learn. And I think there's a, a lot of partnership that we can form through these alumni by knowing, collaborating with other uh, finalists, other uh, cohort, and to provide because a lot of time we are looking into piecemeal solution, but they are not integrated together. But then there's a lot of good piecemeal. How can we stitch them together? So that's actually what the personally ones doing now and we hope that we can leverage on that to build an ecosystem to be stronger because once you have many cohorts working together and, uh, and hunt as a pet, then we will be more successful in the global market because we are very small. Once we hang together as a pet, then we are bigger. Yeah, mm. yeah that's, that's also uh, what we want to tell our alumni and cohort, uh, the current cohort is that actually our alumni, uh, they kind of just find their partners uh, within their own cohort sometimes and, and sometimes with their seniors or their alumni. So they found partnerships that actually tackle problems together. Uh, so that works a lot better, isn't it, uh, Pamela? I know that you are working with SHIP uh, for the SHIP supplies uh, industry. 
And uh, we also have other alumni working together uh, to tackle bigger um, problems. So that's why uh, it's important to keep the network, uh, the networking events ongoing. Um, yeah. So since Pamela brought up that she wants to fly back to Jakarta as soon as the pandemic's over, this, this question is slightly uh, different and it's probably given to, should be given to Sazali. So now with the COVID-19 in the background, uh, how would expansion activities change and what can people do to overcome uh, certain challenges? I mean, some very obvious ones would be travel is really, really difficult uh, right now. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Now, obviously, there are some challenges, but maybe I, I highlight the, the, the positive points first, right? Uh, for example, uh, before COVID, uh, people like Pamela and Steven have to fork out a bit of money to fly there, right? Uh, spend some time, and then uh, we have to arrange the corporates to attend the same event, right? And it's only for one city, right? So now with COVID, uh, you can do it virtually, obviously. And, and not only with the corporates from that one city, but also from other cities, right? Currently, uh, our tech showcase day, uh, because it's purely virtual, we have corporates from Indonesia, Vietnam, and Singapore uh, attending the same event. And then we have startups from all these locations pitching to the same event. So, so that's the plus point. I mean, initially, there was a bit of a struggle when it first happened last year. Uh, but I think more corporates are more open to attending this uh, online event. Right, uh, and we try to make it quite close to what Pamela and Steven experienced last year. Not just pitching online, but also breakout rooms. Uh, we can arrange meetings organically with uh, corporates and vice versa, so you can follow on meetings. Right, uh, and positive, similar results like what we experienced last uh, when we do it physically. Right, uh, so about three to four leads average per startups uh, after each of these sessions. Right. Of course, the challenge now, what's next? How do you close the deal, right? Uh, you're not there, you're not there, right? Uh, so we have some success stories before. Uh, for example, the ones that are easier were of course those who are pure SaaS kind of solution. Right? Uh, we have one, one case where he participated in Tech Showcase Day, he pitched and within a few days, uh, he's discussing to close the deal with the customer. In fact, the customer not only bought the system for him, the customer also invested in him. Uh, because the solution is size based you can use existing infrastructure, right? Uh, of course, the other side is a challenge that those that uh, require on-site implementation, on-site implementation. So we have cases where some of our startups already have partners uh, in country, like in Jakarta and so on. Uh, so they can work with their partners uh, for their on-site presence uh, to deliver the solution to the on-site or to deliver the hardware. So that will definitely be helped, right? The challenge is for those who uh, maybe not purely says, but you will need on-site presence to, to, to not only sell, but install the system. So what we try to do now is to not only connect you with corporates, but connect you with uh, potential partners, right? Uh, so where we come in is we try to do a warm introduction. Right, uh, uh, partner in Indonesia, for example, if you're looking in Indonesia, or partner in Vietnam, you're looking in Vietnam, which might complement your business and we introduce and up to you guys to, to make it work, right? And another, like what uh, Ning is mentioned also, you can also partner with your seniors or your, your cohort who really have presence, right? So, so that's, that's another way. Uh, but, so it's a bit more difficult for sure, but it's not impossible. That's happening to know. All right, uh, last question for today's session would be uh, for Steph, uh, Stephen. Uh, so someone asked you, how did you approach partners like Intel and IO3? Uh? Well, Basically, you, how did you convince them to work with you? <laughs> <laughs> that, that is a fantastic and that's a great question. Uh, okay, so there are two parts to it, right? So for Intel, what, what did Intel see in us that was exciting for them? Uh, they saw in us our traction in the segment and they saw in us, in a funny sort of way, our understanding of the domain, which in a way, if you think about it, we weren't that much of an expert to begin with. But all thanks again to PS71, we, we were able to have that lingo and we were able to show traction afterwards. And then when Intel says, wow, you know, we can definitely leverage on such a company to break into a segment that maybe is something that they might not be very familiar with right? and we'll get showing traction. So that's 
part number one, how to get in touch with Intel. Now, IO3, uh, we just have to explore. And, and a lot of those networking sessions actually helps, right? And then that's when you have to find your feet. Because uh, IO3, they are, they are actually veterans in the field of uh, satellite comms. But they also wanted to branch out into the world of IoT. And in fact, what is very interesting uh, in our collaboration with IO3 now is we're actually pulling data from VDR, the vessel uh, data recorder, which is the equivalent, as I was told, the black box of ships. So we're pulling data from there. We are helping them with predictive uh, analytics. We pull the data, they do the analytics. And now uh, our system is actually being deployed in quite a number of ships around the world. And we can actually track those ships real time, uh, the performance and so on and so forth. So they, they are the people who is actually every day dealing with the end customers. And, and then we support them with the technology. So it actually ties in very nicely because honestly for us as a tech company, it's not easy to deal with you know, ship owners and so on and so forth. So through IO3, we leverage on their market reach. They leverage on us for technology. So it's a, it's a very nice fit that way. I guess the bottom line is everyone must find a win-win. Uh. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So you have to find something that's complimentary. And, and, and I totally agree with what Pamela said. You know, Han is a pack. Uh, don't try to take on the world on yourself, uh, by yourself because it's, it's tough, right? So you work with people. And, and for example, IO3 has already uh, existing clients who has more needs, right? So initially what they, they are looking at is, oh, just satellite comms. But now they want to get onto this whole digitalization bandwagon, more of IoT and so on and so forth. And that's where working together actually brings a lot of value to the table. Right. Thank you so much. And that's going to conclude uh, my segment today with the speakers. So thank you very much, Suzali, uh, Pamela, and Stephen uh, for coming online uh, today. So to the attendees who are mostly Pierce and One's uh, current cohort, if you want to get connected to Blocks Anyone, you can let myself or Gao know and we're happy to do the introduction. Yeah. And, and they have their booster program next year in March. So that's also a great program if you want to do exploratory um, kind of uh, activity to go into different kinds of markets. Lah. Yeah. So I'm going to pass the time back to Gaomi. Yep. Thanks a lot, Ning. So once again, thanks to Zali, Pamela, and uh, Stephen for the very enriching sharing session. So to our participants, um, so we can now head off to the slide where we can... Yep. Thanks, Priscilla. So do scan the QR code to visit our LinkedIn page and follow us. We post regular updates on various events, programs, and currently we are featuring a lot on the SP, uh, our Smartboard Challenge 2021 uh, journey. And also do drop us an email if you have any questions. So next, register for our two upcoming sessions next week uh, on the best practices of marketing on 12th October, as well as uh, IP management strategies for startups on 13 October. Yeah. So that's all for today. See you then. Bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Keep safe. Yeah.